how the heck do we generate income in retirement? Today's episode is going to be called Income the Bank's Way, Wall Street's Way, or the Insurance Company's Way. So now we're all told to save money in our 401ks, our 403bs, our 457s, IRAs, Roths, you name it, right? Whatever company plan that we've got, we're told to do that. We're told to do that for an, our entire life, but I meet so many uh, seniors, so many retirees that then don't know how to generate income from that. So we're told to save up in these accounts to use them for income later on down the road, but then we're not told how to use them for income. So I feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect uh, on how to do this. And so there are, if somebody's going to do this passively, I know there's lots of different ways that you can generate income. Uh, you could become a, a real estate mogul. You could learn how to flip or you could learn how to, uh, you know, find good deals and get passive income that way. But I mean, it's not really passive. It is kind of a job. Um, I myself have different rental properties and, and yeah, there, there's, there's still work done uh, that or work that needs to be done. There's management of either the property itself or management of the property management company. If you don't want to be as involved and spend as much time in there, then you just have to manage the property management company, which does make it a little bit easier, but still it is still like it take, it does take time. It's not passive renters could decide not to pay, right? The tenants. Um, and, and then, so it's not nearly as passive or as predictable or consistent of an income stream as what some of these other amounts could be. And so we're going to talk about that. So when it comes to outside of, you know, rental property and, and using that as a business type of an income stream, really, we're going to talk about three different ways to generate income in retirement. We're going to talk about, like I said, the bank's way, Wall Street's way, and the insurance company's way. So those, those three different ways. Now, Let's go, let's talk about the bank's way first. Uh, right now we are sitting in historically low interest rates. I mean, maybe this would have worked better if we were back in the eighties. Um, but as it is now, I'm on bankrate.com here and I'm looking at the best CD rates that it could come up with. Nine month CD rates sitting here at 0.6%. Uh, I've got best one year rate, 0.8. Uh, two year rates, we finally crested over the 1% mark. And three year, 1.15, not bad. Four year, 1.2. Five year, we get to 1.35%. So we're just going to use 1.35%. So let's, let's use a hypothetical example here. Let's say there's a couple that needs an extra $40,000 outside of their social security, uh, outside of any pensions they have. They have to generate $40,000 of additional income from their retirement savings. All these areas they were told to save in, their 401ks, IRAs, Roths, 403Bs, you name it. They were, all of these is now what they have to tap into to generate that extra $40,000. So how are they going to do it? The bank, 1.35%. Well, how much money would you have to have in the bank to generate enough interest in order to make $40,000 a year? Carry the one. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple seconds here. It's actually $2.962 million. So $2,962,962 and 96 cents to be exact. That's a big number just to generate $40,000. And, and so if we're looking for the, the most amount of money that can be generated with the smallest amount of assets, in today's environment, that's really not that good of a choice. Uh, now, is it? Now, there's some benefits. It's safe. So it's not fluctuating with the stock market or anything like that. It is completely safe. So you know that if you only spend that 1.35% per year, then your principal will stay intact. You'll be able to pass that on to your kids. That, that's a benefit, right? So the, the choice becomes, am I comfortable with the trade-off? I know it's safe. I know if I only take that amount out, the kids will still have that full $2.9 million left in there. I know that. Um, but the trade-off is it's a very, very small percentage point that you're earning. So the other category, the next category would be Wall Street. So there's often been a 4% rule that has been widely accepted since basically the 90s when William Bengen first came out with this 4% uh, rule. However, that 4% rule has been revisited quite a few times on, on whether or not there could actually be a, if that is a safety withdrawal rate. And with the volatility of the market from 2001-02, again in 2008, here with the coronavirus here recently, um, there's a lot of articles that will talk about a 2.8% withdrawal rate and how that's safer. 2.8 is the new 4% apparently. And so at 2.8%, how much money would it take to generate that $40,000? Well, it would take $1 million $428,000, or 
well, sorry, $1,428,571.43. So 1.4 million, better than the 2.9, definitely better. Even if they followed the full 4% rule, it would still be $1 million that you would need in order to generate that full $40,000. So less, we're headed in the right direction. Um, and the great thing about the Wall Street's way, I guess, would be also if you're only taking out 2.8% or 4%, 4% and your portfolio is also averaging that every single year, which we know it doesn't, but if it hypothetically did, once again, you would still have your principal intact to be able to pass on to your kids. Um, and so there's a benefit there. Third category insurance way. So insurance companies do this usually through a variety of different types of annuities. There are several different types of annuities out there, but we're just going to focus on the income stream and the payout percentage. By pooling risk, a lot of um, insurance companies on their annuities can have payouts from four and a half percent, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, I mean, just depending on the age of the annuitant when they turn the income on. And now that four and a half to six and a half or whatever percentage payout that is, that is now guaranteed for the entire life of the annuitant and their spouse if they do it on a joint basis, subject to the claims paying ability of the issuing company, is, uh, of course. Uh, but it is now guaranteed. If they go below through the entire amount that they put into the annuity plus any of the growth, they still have to pay that money to them every single month, no matter how long they live. If they make it to 105 and they've been, uh, and that money has been gone and out of the annuity for, say, five or 10 years, they still get those checks like clockwork. Annuities are the only vehicle that can guarantee a lifetime stream of income. CDs can't do it. Wall Street can't do it. No other vehicle can do it. So it becomes a very important piece to help get rid of the longevity risk or lower the longevity risk. The risk of outliving your money is what longevity risk is. And so let's use let's just use the smallest one that I mentioned, four and a half percent. So if you have uh, if you can get a four and a half percent return or cash flow, excuse me, payout percentage on your assets, how much money do you need to generate that $40,000? Well, it's $888,888.89. Even if they only needed, if they were able to get a 6% payout, well, that brings it down to $666,666.67. So a lot less. Let's just use the higher, the, the 888. Let's say it takes uh, that much. Well, that is 38% less than what Wall Street took. You know, it took Wall Street uh, more than that. So 38% less than what it took Wall Street to generate the same income and 70% less than what it took the bank to generate the same income. And so this is why a, an annuity ends up becoming a piece of someone's plan. Because if you think about it like this, if that's all you need and we're able to get that on the, the guaranteed basis subject to the claims paying ability of the issuing company is always the disclosure that I put on there, um, which historically has really not been that much of an issue. So that's, that's a good thing. What that means is if you have more than the $888,888.89, that means that other amount of your money can do other things for you. It can be there for emergencies. It can be there for inflation hedging. It can be there for uh, additional reasons, tra travel, uh, leisure, any other things that you want to do in retirement. So if we take less money to generate your base expense needs, then you have more money to do other things with. And so that's the bank's way, Wall Street's way, or the insurance company's way. So thanks. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Um, hit the notification bell that to be notified every time that we end up bringing up uh, new content, uh, you'll get alerted. And also guys, if this is something that is that you are, uh, if any of this has been enticing at all to you, uh, or if you're interested in anything that we've said about how to generate those uh, different streams of income, just reach out to us. Uh, there's lots of different places, millerretirementgroup.com. There might be a Calendly link, uh, you know, link to our calendar somewhere in the comment section here below. There's going to be tons of ways to get a, uh, a hold of us. Our MillerRetirementGroup.com website will have multiple different ways of either scheduling a, a call with us or it's got our contact information everywhere. Um, so we want to be able to keep giving you content to help you make the decisions that you need to make in retirement so we can empower you to live the retirement you deserve. Take care.